What's going on guys? Ben Gulligan here coming back at you with another video and yeah, get the jokes out of the way. I know, I know what's coming. It's cool. Everyone in the comments, feel free to do whatever you want. Oh, you're a Bengals fan. You're Bengals rebuilding his favorite team. I've never heard it before, okay? The sensitive subject. But uh, no, on the serious, on the reels. I know a lot of new people are in here. You guys probably think I am a Bengals fan, but it's actually a little bit worse right now. I'm a Giants fan. Uh, I just like Tigers and when I made my name, I was like, 13 years old, so lay off me, okay? I'm wearing a Giants uh, long sleeve right now, actually. Yeah, uh, never in public. Don't get me wrong. I don't need the, oh, you're excited about Daniel Jones? Yeah, dude, I'm pumped. How could I not be? Let's go ahead and get into the uh, the roster. That's a great picture, Zach Taylor. What is this, like, he's 11? Uh, taking his school picture? It looks terrible. Oh, my God. Okay, so... As endearing as the Red Rifle is, Andy Dalton is gone, and I will be trading him for anything. This is not a realistic, realistic rebuild, okay? This is, I'm going to do what needs to be done. Andy Dalton, gone. We're going to stick with Joe Mixon, of course, but Gio Bernard, gone. I don't need him. John Ross, I don't know, man. Like, only normal dev. He can fly, obviously. Holds the record for fastest 40-yard dash ever at the NFL Combine, and don't give me your Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders, 419, okay? Hand time is completely different from a computer um, digital time. Very different. But across the offensive line, it's bad. It's a really bad offensive line. So you look at Cordy Glenn, who's definitely the best piece on it, or best player right now, and we're turning injuries off. Jonah Williams is playing. I know he tore his labrum. He's playing. He's the best piece, but Cordy Glenn's the best piece when he's injured right now. Uh, Billy Price has star development, along with, I'm sure, Jonah Williams, who has star development. I'd have to guess it's star. There's no way they gave him superstar. So, we have some guys that can develop, but, but everyone's replaceable except for Jonah Williams, really. I, I think Billy Price will come along nicely, but if he doesn't, whatever. Tyler Eifert, if he can stay on the field, is one of the best tight ends in football. And then defensively, uh, oh boy, linebacking core awful. I love Malik Jefferson, dude. Don't get, don't get me wrong. He was a little bit of a disappointment at Texas for me. I'm a big Texas Longhorns fan. Uh, he was a five-star recruit. Just uh, hasn't exactly been, or wasn't the best at Texas. Didn't live up to his hype. Uh, ended up drafting in, what, the third round by the Bengals? Maybe the fourth? Jermaine Pratt is a draft pick this time. Hardy Nickerson in there as well. Hardy, I think it's Hardy. Why am I... Yeah, I don't know why I was... Uh, Hesitant about that, but Preston Brown, yeah, he gets a lot of tackles. He's not that great. Nick Vigil, not great. Sean Williams is a decent player, not great. Now, Jesse Bates is fantastic. Had a great year, was really a good player at Wake Forest, and then um, went under the radar, and the Bengals scooped him up, and he was definitely a good addition to the team. Cornerback is pretty awful, in my opinion. I love William Jackson the third. Darquez Denard is kind of a bust. Drake Kirkpatrick, another first-round corner, kind of a bust. Was never really all that good. Defensive line is definitely the strong suit of this team. Carl Lawson, Geno Atkins, Andrew Billings, Carlos Dunlap, Sam Hubbard in here, um, Jordan Willis. Definitely a good group. Sam Hubbard is going to be someone I consider moving to defensive tackle. And he's got freaking dust in his face. So the face scan for Sam Hubbard is not Sam Hubbard. It is the lead ratings guy at EA and it looks exactly like him and it's frightening and that scared the hell out of me but Sam Hubbard is going to play defensive tackle I'll probably even play some higher uh than Andrew Billings also Rennell Wren in here uh Kerry Wynn former giant this is going to be the roster before we make any trades Clayton Fedulum in here as well I'm just going to try and trade for draft picks and any good young players that I can and we'll see what happens AJ Green and Geno Atkins. I didn't really even talk about receiver at all, did I? I skipped completely over that, but AJ Green, Tyler Boyd, obviously not going anywhere. AJ Green's going to regress and it's going to suck and he's not going to be good in two years or not going to be that good in two years in the game, but uh, you know, it happens. This team's going to be pretty bad season one, if I had to guess. Carlos Dunlap's 30 as well. Oh no, he's going to be down into the 70s after this year. Yo, this kind of sucks. This, this might be a really tough rebuild. Holy... First trade is going to be Drake Kirkpatrick and Andy Dalton for a first-round pick from the Dolphins. Should be a very, very good pick as the Dolphins are not great. I guess now they have Andy Dalton, they might win a few more games. Because 80 overall, I mean, we can go through the NFL here and you guys can see. 80 overall is, is not bad for a QB. Andy Dalton's an 80. Carson Wentz is slightly above an 80. Matt Ryan's an 89. 
Garoppolo under 80, Manning below 80, Foles below 80, Sam Darnold below 80, Matt Stafford below 80. I mean, you guys get the point. Sure, there are some guys that are definitely above, but mo- uh, mainly, I tried to combine mostly and mainly there, would have gotten Moanly, which <laughs> it's a great name for a kid. Might be something I have to write down. But um, yeah, I mean, they might actually win some games. So that pick might become less valuable, unfortunately, but I'm not done this team is just their best players are 31 or 30 it's it's really really bad for the future everyone's gonna regress the team's gonna suck this is a tough tough rebuild even if it doesn't look like it this is gonna be really a big challenge this trade is gonna be sean williams and carlos dunlap for joel batonio pretty easy to trade for offensive linemen in this game and i think we need to improve our offensive line a lot that's gonna be a big addition as you guys can tell didn't really have a left guard previously so uh Definitely going to be a major, major improvement. And I know trading Carlos Dunlap is t- is tough, but regression's going to hit hard. Joel Batonio is a more valuable player in the long run. That's just, we got to make some tough decisions, and that is one of them. CJ Uzoma, Darquez Denard, and a third gets me Carl Joseph. I hope he develops well. He's going to start at strong safety. He's going to be that Sean Williams replacement. Definitely a lot better, and uh, I hope he has star development, although he might not. BW Webb is a vicious option um, this cornerback group's horrible now. I know I traded their next best two after William Jackson. That's just the way she goes sometimes. So, uh, that had to be done. Nick Vigil, I'm also looking to trade maybe. Jordan Willis might have some value. Andrew Billings is gone. I'm going to start Sam Hubbard, which star development makes me want to do that. Cordy Glenn's got to go. If any of these guys have any interest in teams, they're gone. The Vikings always shit the bed in simulation, so this is an easy move for me. Andrew Billings and Cordy Glenn for their first round pick. I know that the first round pick generator is our trade stuff it's not exactly realistic i'm aware of this but i'm not sure anything about this rebuild is going to be realistic man this team is garbage and i i really hate to say it but at least in madden this team is dog shit and we need to do anything we can to make them a competitor when you spend a second round pick on drew sample like you got to be kidding me all right nick vigil ryan glasgow in the future two for a first rounder from the giants I really didn't want to get rid of the future, too, but it was the only way that it was going to happen. And, uh, yeah, cry. I have a lot of first-round picks. Has to happen. I need literally any advantage I can get with this Bengals team. It is uh, horrific. And I've really... I've come down harder on them than any other team that I've rebuilt thus far. And that's because their only good players are old and they're going to regress. And everyone else sucks. Pretty much. I mean, a few exceptions here and there. But this is really not going to be an easy team to deal with, unfortunately. And at the midseason mark, we are 6-2-0. and oh. Are you kidding me? How? How? We're a 70 overall, man, with Jeff Driscoll as our starting quarterback. Madden Sim Engine is so bad. I don't even want to be successful. They're not ready. We got Derek Morgan now. Oh, my God. This team is garbage. Why are we winning games? That's so stupid. That's so stupid. I'm, I'm mad. That's exactly what's happening. I'm, I'm actually mad. Doesn't make any sense. And makes even less sense because I just got done doing a realistic rebuild of the Texans. It might be uh, already uploaded on the channel. You guys can check that out. I didn't make the playoffs once. Spoiler alert. And I built an 87 overall team, maybe. Didn't make the playoffs once. Bengals, 70 overall year one. Six and two. Like, I'm I'm perplexed. We'll simulate to the playoffs. I'll worry about contracts at the end of year one. Unbelievable that this is even a playoff scenario. So, we did not make the playoffs. Thankfully, finished 8-7-1, which is way better than I would have liked to do. Although only two wins in the second half of the season. Jeff Driscoll was shockingly good for being Jeff Driscoll and only like a 60 overall. Um, Just kind of backs up my opinion that the Madden Sim engine is completely screwed up. Receiving Tyler Boyd was phenomenal. And then uh, blocking-wise, Joel Batoni let up 15 sacks. The best offensive lineman on our team let up 15 sacks, nearly one per game interesting Gino Atkins brought in some great pressure interceptions Carl Joseph led the team with three I didn't even adjust some of the starters although I probably should have done that uh definitely forgot because I had to go to the bathroom you guys didn't need to know that but I'm telling you as Drew Brees wins MVP of the 13 and 3 New Orleans Saints a lot of Saints in here 
Uh, what team am I doing? The Bengals AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Baker Mayfield. No Bengals in there. Defensive Player of the Year is Jadavion Clowney. No Bengals. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Hollywood Brown. I feel like he wins it a lot. Drew Sample at number four. He probably would have won it if I even had him as my second tight end, but I don't think I did. Uh, Rod uh, Rodney Anderson in there as well. Oklahoma? Rodney Anderson would have to be. I don't know who else would be. Ryan Finley at 10, who barely even threw the ball. Ed Oliver wins Defensive Rookie of the Year, and of course, as always, Levi Wallace makes an appearance despite not being a rookie. Jermaine Pratt at number seven. Browns beat the Packers in the Super Bowl 28-27. That would be a very cool Super Bowl to watch. As uh, A.J. Green, of course, down to an 87 overall, and a free agent, Tyler Eifert, Carl Joseph, Gio Bernard. The rest can walk. I'd probably like to bring back Tyler Eifert and Carl Joseph. A.J. Green, I kind of have to, uh, although I'm not super pumped about it. I don't even want to sign him to a two-year deal, so I guess I would do a three-year deal. So I guess I'll do two years, up the money a little bit. He'll probably decline, and I'll franchise tag him. And um, you're probably test out free agency. You're not. Is it 18 mil per year? Yeah. Are you worth it? Absolutely not at this point, but it's what you're getting. And then Tyler Eifert, I'll have the money on him to bring him back. Oh, no. He said no. All right, well, buy Tyler Eifert, I guess. I might bring him back in free agency anyway. And then Carl Joseph has to return, which means I have to bump up the money in order to get him to come back. And uh, he comes back. But the rest, eh, don't really care. Kareem Hunt's here. Kendall Fuller is here as well. And um, I'm going to bring back Tyler Eifert. Is Eric Ebron better bang for my buck? Certainly. Certainly is. But eh, I probably just want to keep Tyler Eifert, if I'm honest. So Nelson Aguilar got up to superstar development. Wow. That's interesting. Does he have jukebox? Did I see that? Oh, he doesn't. He has post-flag elite. Whatever. But, um... He has some interesting players in here, of course. Drew Brees could be an interesting option, although I'd rather draft a QB. Some people ask me, oh, you're stupid for not signing Drew Brees. Why would you not want to rebuild around a 41-year-old quarterback who's going to retire in a year? I don't know. Maybe you can figure that one out. Tyler Eifert comes back, but also Miles Jack accepts, and I literally never sign Miles Jack. This might be the first time I've signed him in any of the rebuilds that I've done. And he's a really good player. He's super young. He's got good development. It's got to be a player that I keep signing. Are we in a 3-4? Because, like, I know we're not, but it seems like, uh, based on how our defense is performing, we might be. <laughs> I, I know this is obviously a 4-3 based on the personnel and all that, but would we be better served by moving to a 3-4? Carl Lawson would slide out to outside linebacker. Sam Hubbard would be a more natural 3-4 end. Geno Atkins would stay at defensive tackle. And then we'd just be looking for another 3-4 end with Jordan Willis moving back to outside linebacker, and then Miles Jack being on the inside with Preston Brown. There's actually a lot of potential there. It just depends on how this draft goes, I guess. Still looking to improve a lot at corner. We'll have to see what happens in the draft, obviously. We have the first overall pick. That's fun. Of course, three others. And Tracy Peterson out of Oklahoma State looks really, really, really good That'd be a really fun number one overall pick as well. 36 bench press reps. This would be a perfect transition into a 3-4, by the way, because we could play him on the inside. I don't even know if, like what type of player he is. This power rusher, he's not exactly a 3-4 end, but he's 270, so he's got the size for it. He's really strong. We could kind of play him wherever we want, probably. He's just that good. Jaden Bagley out of Bama. This is basically your Jerry Judy type. A similar size and ability and speed and athleticism. Looks really, really good. Zamel Burke out of Ohio State also looks fantastic. Really strong as well. 6'7", 302. There are some fun players in this class already. This is a really good draft class. This is a really, really good draft class. I definitely want uh, a bunch of these players, and obviously I cannot have them all. Clock is ticking here. And Tracy Peterson looks like quite a good option. I don't think I'm going to be able to pass it up. A minus everything that we can see. He had a great combine. I think he's going to give us a lot of versatility. Drafting Tracy Peterson doesn't necessarily mean we have to move to a 3-4. Although, I don't think it'd be the worst option as we do end up taking him. He's the best player in the class. We took him at number one. He does have star or better development. 79 overall is phenomenal. 79 speed, 83 power moves. You go with 80 block shit, 88 strength. 
He can pretty much do anything. 72 is such a gross number for a defensive end. But uh, it had to be the first pick. He's just clearly the best player in the class, in my opinion. I know this is kind of coming out of left field, but I'm trading number 7 overall and Sam Hubbard, who I know is a big piece of our potential move to a 3-4. But I think this is going to be worth it. We're moving back um, a lot. So it's a first rounder next year and a second rounder this year. I think it's going to be really good for us. And um, there's just some players I'd like to take. Bagley was a 77 overall and adds to Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs in that receiving core. We pick again at number 11. I'll go a one by one here. Hopefully the player that I want does not go. That might have been him. Devon Seymour out of Ole Miss, 77 overall D-tackle. Uh, really, really good. <laughs> nah, there's still some good D-tackles. Austin Allen is maybe the one that I wanted. And I think I'm going to be taking him. Looks incredible. Looks really, really good. And he is a 75 overall, ranked number 13 in the class. We took him at 11, has star development or better. 75 overall is immediately better than Sam Hubbard. And he also has star development. So pretty good. We pick again at 19. Now, I really hope the player I want did not get drafted. There goes a great tackle. As I said, this class is pretty stacked. And uh, I'm going to be pissed if he's gone. He's still available. I'm not going to let it slip any further. I'm taking George Hawk, who is my QB of the future. Very, very well-rounded. Good top three skills. Has a bit of a cannon on him. And uh, is an athlete as well. And he's a 73 overall. Ranked at number 19 in the class. We took him at 19. Only normal development kind of hurts. But we're going to work around him. Hopefully, he's our new QB of the future. That's the goal. And uh, don't let me down. Now, at the very top of round two, I'm going to be taking Adrian Burney, I believe. He's a slot cornerback out of Oregon. He just seems to be the best player available, so welcome to the team. 71 overall, ranked number 30. We take him at 33. Normal dev is a bit unfortunate, but uh, overall, definitely good enough to play year one. Whether that's starting or whether that's just, you know, in the nickel and in the slot exclusively, I'm not quite sure yet, but definitely a good pick. So now I'm, I'm stuck with the decision. Do I take a right tackle in Tim Burrow out of Florida State? who looks very, very good, or do I go with another cornerback who looks like he could be quite good as well? I'm going to say the right tackle is a better player. I'm going to go Tim Burrow. It's a more important position, and he's ranked at number 16 in the class. We took him at 51. 74 overall is quite good. He's extremely well-rounded and definitely a welcome addition to the Cincinnati Bengal team. And now I think that cornerback's going to be, be fairly good as well, but just it wasn't something I could take back-to-back -back picks with some glaring holes on the offensive line. Only one player remains on my draft board, and we're going to take him. Keon Higgins out of Notre Dame. He is a 69 overall. Nice. Number 51 in the class. We took him at 115. He also has star development or better. That's going to be a really, really welcome addition as well. So now across the offensive line, we can see Jonah Williams at left tackle. Uh, Joel Batonio at left guard. Center is Billy Price. Right guard is going to be Keon Higgins, and then right tackle could, could be that guy that we drafted. So, uh... Really, really good pickup as well. Yeah, that was gross. <laughs> and the great thing about fifth round picks in this game is they can be usually turned over for fourths. Sixth round picks as well can be usually turned over for fourth. You don't really get third round offers ever, but we'll take this one from the Falcons. And we'll trade this uh, sixth rounder for a fourth next year from the Texans as well. And then I think we'll simulate to the end. I'm excited to see how stacked this draft was. There were some really, really good players that we saw flying off the board. So um, that is just my team, obviously. That's not what I'm looking for. I went the wrong way. Uh, B is one of the first letters in the alphabet, not one of the last. And uh, yeah, even Pearson Parker was pretty good. It's like your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man with that name. Nah, it's not, it's not the same. Randy Barker, 78 overall in the second round. That's very, very good. Alabama O-line OP. Samel so Burke was quite good as well. Evan Baptiste, who we didn't have a shot, it was quite good. A lot of these running backs look good that I just couldn't get to drafting for obvious reasons. Riley Peterson was even really good. I want to see where that corner is. We had a really good draft, as we usually do. But where is that CB? It's even in the uh, 70s, maybe not. Was it Kishan Stevens? I think it was, out of Ohio State, 69 overall. I mean, it's nice, but it's nothing crazy. Wow, Hawk is a thick boy, huh? He looks huge. Not in that necessarily, not in that shot, but in that shot. Oh my goodness, okay. I don't know what the disconnect here with the face scan is. I might go ahead and move that because it's frightening to look at, if I'm honest. Maybe it's a simple switch back and forth. We'll change it. But, um, ugh. 
It doesn't. He looks gross. No effect. If you look like that, that's fine. But in the game, I'm not about it. <laughs> Simplest way to put it. The offensive line is in a spot where I'm actually quite happy about it. And uh, Higgins, I'm going to make a full-time right guard. And those mutton chops as well. If you look like that, you just might be from the 1840s. That's what I'm looking at with him. And um, I like the offensive line. John Miller is not going to be starting. Let's go ahead and reorder the depth chart. Why would... No, 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 no. Get out of here, John Miller. Offensive line looks good. We'll upgrade the team, of course, as well. And then defensively, we have some options. We really do. I think a transition into a 3-4 defense is going to benefit the team. Preston Brown and Miles Jack up the middle. And then Carl Lawson and Jordan Willis at outside linebacker. Peterson on the inside at, well, at 3-4 end. Uh, and then Austin Allen can be a 3-4 defensive end as well. That's going to be a really nice combo. This will be the team for season number two. I'm actually really excited with where the team is because we had some huge draft picks. That was a stellar, stellar class in terms of just development because Higgins has star development at right guard. Defensively, we have star development all over the place from Peterson, Austin Allen. This is a really, really good team. Jordan Willis is up to a 74 overall now. The team has been upgraded. Things are looking up. We have a new starting cornerback who's a rookie who's a 71 overall that should play some sort of an impact here in year uh, one of his career, but year two of the rebuild. So let's go ahead and simulate now to the midseason mark. See how this team's doing. It's a better team than last year, and we won six games up to week nine. So I'm expecting at least similar production. You'd have to, but uh, probably a sophomore slump is uh, inbound after the first season. It's just... It just never goes well when I make the team better, and we are 6-2 and two again. That's insane to me, but you know what? I can't complain. We're up to a 77 overall, so we're definitely in range that we can compete now. The Browns, of course, overpowered per usual, but their team's really, really good, um, at least in terms of overall. So we will upgrade training a little bit here and upgrade the team a little bit. Joe Mixon also wants a new contract. I'm fine to do that. AJ Green, of course, once again, an impending free agent. William Jackson, Carl Lawson in here. John Ross, Fat Randy. Haven't put nearly enough emphasis on him in this rebuild. Jordan Willis. I might try to bring everybody back. We have so much money for big contracts. 95 mil in cap room. Now, that's going to go down to probably about 65 with these contracts, but I'm totally fine with that. That's still a lot of money. Wait, I'm not giving you a three-year deal. It just cannot happen. So we brought back everybody with the exception of AJ Green, who of course wants more bonus and more length on the contract. I'm not going to extend AJ Green through age 35. It just is not something I'm comfortable doing. So while we have the money, I would rather just give him more money by franchise tagging him and keeping him on a short leash. Simulating now to the playoffs, we made the playoffs at 9-7 and seven after a big win over the Cleveland Browns, 24-21 that I'm sure put us in the playoffs, and it did. Three teams from the AFC North are going to be in the playoffs. The Ravens won the division at 10-6. and six. Wow, the AFC North was quite interesting this year, and I'm sure George Hawk won Offensive Rookie of the Year. We were 16th in offense, 14th in defense, so a middle-of-the-pack team that snuck into the playoffs. I'm cool with that. Hawk threw for over 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, only 12 picks. Rushing Joe Mixon was fantastic. Might need to get a better backup running back because 2.8 yards per carry from Rodney Anderson is not going to cut it. Receiving Tyler Boyd over 1,000 yards, 12 TDs. Unreal season. John Ross was also somewhat decent. Offensive line was good. I like that. Defensively, Miles Jack led our team in tackles with 130. Tackles for loss, 16 from Geno Atkins led the way. Sacks, 8 for rookie Tracy Peterson, 7 for Geno Atkins, 6 for Carl Lawson. Two picks for the rookie Adrian Burney out of Oregon led the team. Force fumbles, Carl Joseph had two. And then any defensive touchdowns, per usual, nope. We used to get a lot last year, but not so much this year. Matt Ryan wins MVP of the 12-4 Atlanta Falcons. Jacoby Brissett, again, per usual, in the MVP race. Saints always get him, and he always balls out. Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Andrew Luck. No Bengals in there. Defensive Player of the Year is Zach Brown. Miles Jack in there at number 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year, it had to be George Hawk. It just wasn't going to be anybody else. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Adrian Burney. Tracy Peterson in there as well, up to an 83 overall. But uh, Adrian Burney, I'd almost rather him win it because his development might go up. Austin Allen at number six. 
would have been cool as well. But everyone played pretty well. Our rookies kind of tell the story of this team right now. We had so many big rookies. Uh, I, why did I say like there was a G in rookies? That was kind of odd. But there were so many big rookies that kind of led the way. Hawk up to a 77. I just need some of these development traits to go up. And we're going to be cooking with gas. Because as you can see, it's star all over the place. Nothing higher than that right now, except for Geno Atkins and AJ Green, who are two, um, like, you know, veterans, we'll say. They're over 30 by a lot now. 32, 33. So we'll see if we can beat the Colts in the wild card, even though we have a better record. I imagine they won their division, and that's why they have home field advantage at 8-8, eight and eight, which seems ridiculous that that would happen. But we'll check the standings. Uh, maybe they didn't. But in the AFC... Um, let's check the AFC, what, AFC South? Yeah, Colts won the division 8-8. Eight eight. That's, uh, that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can beat them and advance to the divisional. And we do not. 24-17 is your final. A little bit unfortunate, but the team's coming along nicely. We're up to an 80 overall. I'm very excited for Season 3. I need to have a big draft here, though. And improve this team. AJ Green, of course, is a free agent as the Saints beat the Chargers 28-7 in Super Bowl 55. AJ Green down to an 84 is going to be really tough. Mason Shrek is on here. Last time I remember talking about him, we did a, a terrible Shrek impression. And um, I'm going to hold off this time around. AJ Green, he wants uh, only two years now. Maybe that's what I offered him. He's just not worth that. I'm down to just give you one year, and if you accept, you accept. That's more money than you're going to get elsewhere. I'm going to franchise tag him. It's 18.1 mil. I know he's not worth it. I'm fully down with that. I, I get it. But um, he's going to stay on the team another year, and that'll probably be it. He might go down into the 70s at the end of this season. Maybe we'll sign some big players in free agency. Trent Williams is here. Ezekiel Elliott is here, who I definitely don't want, but... Really, really good player. Just we got to work around Joe Mixon. Kevin King has superstar development and is not getting any offers as a 26-year-old. Why would that be? I'm down to offer you. Dalvin Tomlinson as well. Superstar dev. A lot of guys getting upgraded, but nobody on my team. So we got Kevin King, Ryan Allen, but not Zach Cunningham. Zach Cunningham would have been a big boost to the squad at a middle linebacker. Would have been a perfect pairing with Miles Jack, kind of like a, a thunder and lightning combo with Miles Jack, of course, having the wheels and Zach Cunningham being more of a thumper up the middle. Offensive line is certainly coming along. Ooh, Tyler Boyd got superstar dev. Didn't notice that. It's my first time checking out the team, so uh, might be seeing a lot more upgrades than just that. Tyler Boyd's up to an 89 overall as well, which is fantastic. That is really, really nice. He developed super well, apparently. And then Carl Joseph got superstar dev. That's very cool as well. Uh, very cool. Did he make the Pro Bowl or something? I don't know why he got it. I don't know why. Sometimes he just randomly get it. And that's, I mean, I'm perfectly fine with it. Preston Brown not developing all that well. But the rest of the team is. We're in a really good spot. We have some more superstar development players. That's always nice. They're going to develop really well. And now it's just time for us to go out in the draft, which is now. Did I sim to the draft? Oh, God. I guess I did. We pick at number two overall. I know nothing about the players as, uh, well, actually, I do. I saw him. He looked really good, and he is. LeJarvis Tarrant out of Alabama. Kind of a monster. There is a, there's another really good corner in this class so that we could end up taking if I wanted. But John Silver might be my pick. Joe Mooney, who's a speed rusher, looks phenomenal. Could also play outside backer if I wanted him to. Dude, look at these receivers. Thurman Burst looks nice. 4-6-3 speed. Are we joking here? 4-4 four, four flat for John Silver. Might be time to upgrade on John Ross. Jamison Crompton looks quite good as well. Oh my god, first in everything in the combine as well out of Bama. This is your Quinn and Williams V2, I guess. Not quite the same, but Quinn and Williams put in a pretty good shift at the combine. We'll say that much. But this is the cornerback, Shaquille Medlin, out of Nevada. Looks really, really good. Just will he be available when we pick? Almost certainly not. But we pick at number two, man. I don't know what to do here. 
Harvey Beverly, speed rusher out of TCU, looks fantastic as well. I think I might want to go with one of these receivers, though. Let's go John Silver out of Michigan, 6'5", with tremendous speed. This is your A.J. Green V2. Of course, A.J. Green went to Georgia and is uh, an inch shorter and not quite as fast. But John Silver, welcome to the team. 76 overall, star or better development. Uh, we took him at number two, obviously. But a uh, good player. Definitely going to play him above John Ross. And I want to get him involved a lot. Will the player be available at 21 that we want? Probably not. But uh, we'll see. Yeah, he's gone. We'll check out his overall after. Uh, he looked really good. Let's go Harvey Beverly out of TCU. Another guy that looks really, really solid. And in the second round, I can't complain. Number 22 in the class. We took him at 21. I thought this was the second round. It doesn't matter. Normal Dev is uh, not the worst. Will be a good bench player. You don't pick again until the third round. You remember that Giants trade we made? We got rid of a future too. That's where uh, that trade, or that pick went. Time for a backup D tackle. Kobe Clayton out of Florida State. 67 overall, ranked number 64 in the class. We took him at 85. I think that's probably going to be the last pick you guys see, unless we draft someone who's like, uh, I guess, 66 or higher, maybe. Go with another D tackle, Buck Walton. This will be the last pick. He is a 66, so 79 in the class. We draft him at 104. That is going to be your 2021 NFL draft. So LaJarvis Tarrant was actually the number one player in the class. And um, there were some solid players. Joe Mooney out of Central Michigan turned out to be quite good. And uh, Shaquille Medlin went at 15, was a 77 overall. Would have been a really, really nice addition to the team. Just sadly could not get him. Man coverage is quite low, but overall he's good. I like our receiver that we got. I think it's going to be a worthwhile addition to our team over the long uh, road or the long term. But uh, some good players in this class. Overall, not a ridiculously stacked class. We've definitely seen bigger stacked classes. But this was a good one, and we made a good pick. Got a, a very, very worthwhile addition to the team. And I'll probably start him in the slot as well. We'll call him Quicksilver because it's a sick nickname. So starting Silver in the slot basically guarantees him to win Rookie of the Year. And I'm not kidding. That's just, if you draft a receiver and in simulation you want him to do well, put him in the slot. I would almost guarantee his success and i'm also going to spend coach xp but probably on my qb because i don't have that yet and we have enough xp to afford it i need my quarterback to progress quickly we're already up to an 81 overall here in season three but it is time to simulate to the midseason mark see if this team can once again make the playoffs hopefully this time with a slightly better record although i guess the record is irrelevant as long as you make the playoffs and be successful in the playoffs so we'll see how that goes at the midseason mark we are six and two Deja vu. Deja vu. Deja vu. That was a terrible bit. But we're, we've been 6-2 and two every year. In, it doesn't matter what the overall is. We're going to win six games. We're going to lose two up to uh, our bye week. Or at, at week nine, I should say. We'll see who has what amount of skill points and how the team is developing. Silver's already up to a 79 overall. So that proves to be a fantastic pickup already. And then defensively... Uh, guys are progressing. I would love to see someone just, boom, get superstar development out of nowhere. That'd be really cool. Although it seems unlikely that that's something that's going to happen. I'm not going to worry about re-signing anybody at the moment. We're going to see what this team can do in season three and then make a decision on season four based on the results of uh, this simulation. I will see you guys at the playoffs. I expect us to make it. I hope we win at least 10 games. 11 would be very nice. But of course, that remains to be seen. And we got a first round bye. Beautiful. Finished 12-4-0. and oh. Big time plays for the squad. George Hawk, 36 passing touchdowns. Gave us a 12th best offense in football, and we had a top five defense. Love to see those types of things. George Hawk had a great year. Just yards weren't exactly super high. But rushing Joe Mixon definitely got a lot of attempts and capitalized on them. Almost 1,350 yards. Nine touchdowns for him as well. Receiving John Silver. Didn't exactly lead the team in catches, but he certainly did in yards. 930. Tyler Eifert got the bulk of the catches, though. He also had 11 touchdowns. And as a rookie, as in anybody, that's very, very good. Miles Jack led the team in tackles with 118. Tackles for loss, 11 from Tracy Peterson. We're getting a lot of tackles for loss. Not getting a ton of pressure, but Austin Allen off that left end spot. Got nine and a half sacks. I like that. Interceptions, four from William Jackson, three for Jesse Bates. Adrian Burney got two as well. So did Miles Jack. 
forced fumbles, one for a handful of players, and at least one defensive touchdown. Jesse Bates the third found pay dirt in the end zone. Russell Wilson wins MVP. No Bengals in there, really. No QB. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. You think if you were um, top top four in the league in touchdown passes, you might be eligible for an MVP vote or two. But he finishes at number seven in Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year is C.J. Mosley. No other Bengals. Offensive Rookie of the Year is John Silver. I mean, you could see that coming from a mile away. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is that cornerback I wanted, Shaquille Medlin. Harvey Beverly, backup end, finishes at number three. Decent, decent, decent. We finally have a home game at Paul Brown Stadium. We're playing the 9-6-1 Indianapolis Colts. We're up to an 84 overall. That might go up even higher depending on how many skill points I have, if any. Now the CPU's already taken care of it. But uh, Silver's up to an 82. Tyler Boyd, you know, staying around an 89 overall. Wish that would go up a little bit higher. But as you can see from the offensive line, Jonah Williams up to an 83. Betonio, 88. Price, 80. Higgins, 78. Burrow, 80. Tyler Eifert is holding his overall. And then defensively, Tracy Peterson's coming along somewhat nicely. Kevin King is moving along. Carl Joseph, 84 overall. Jordan Willis is nearing an 80. William Jackson's 87. Bernie's coming up close to an 80 overall. So this is definitely a team that can compete. I feel like doing a season four, so we're not going to super sim any of these games. We're just going to simulate them. And we beat the Colts to advance to the AFC Conference Championship, where we'll have to face the 12-4 New York Jets. Why do I feel like this was like a, 19, a late 1980s playoff matchup? Like Ken Anderson versus, I don't know, who would have been the Jets QB in like the late 80s. Boomer Esiason would have been there for a minute. I know he was also with the Bengals. Doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to advance to the Super Bowl, see if we win. And the Saints are going to have it. Are we, next week versus Saints, are we in the Super Bowl? 12-4 and four Bengals versus the 12-4 and four Saints. 85 overall. We're finally winning games. I love to see it. We'll also go to player progression here and upgrade receiver. And why not? Mm, why not running back? Joe Mixon's already good, but we'll hop in here. We'll upgrade our players. We'll super sim this one. Hop in if we need to. I would love a Super Bowl here in year three. Question is, what are the Saints going to be in terms of overall? 87. They're actually better than we are. It's a rarity that ha that happens, but we'll see how this game goes. I'm excited for it. Hopefully, we manage to hold our own. Sometimes I'll hop in Super Sim, and it's an absolute blowout, as you guys have seen in the past. I'd love a Super Bowl win, though. That'd be phenomenal. And usually, that results in a lot of XP and some development upgrades as well. So this could be quite good. We're up going into the half, 28-17, but the Saints not giving up so easily as they drive down the field and take the lead here. But we fire back with a touchdown and another 39-46 out of 29. And that is your ball game. The Cincinnati Bengals here in year three are Super Bowl champions. Sean Payton disgusted as the Saints once again, and I'm going to really pour salt in the wound here for Saints fan, once again cannot capitalize in the playoffs when it matters most. Usually they collapse in the NFC Championship as we've seen back-to-back -back years against the, well, I guess it was the divisional against the Vikings. But uh, in the playoffs, point taken. They've really, they've developed in the divisional a Minneapolis miracle and then next year conference championship no flag I think the Saints should have won that game but five what the hell 461 yards throwing five touchdowns for George Hawk go off have a day but then in the in the conference championship against the uh against the uh why am I blanking here on who they lost to against the Rams couldn't capitalize, and they had their chances too. It wasn't just the penalty by Nikel Roby Coleman that lost them that, that the game. And now in the Super Bowl, Saints fans are pissed now. They've already disliked the video. Cry about it. The Bengals are Super Bowl champions. Miles Jack up there. Our quarterback, George Hawk. Joe Mixon. And then uh, who was the other one? Tyler Boyd? Yeah. 83 that says. The Bengals are Super Bowl champions. Can you believe it? George Hawk with a Super Bowl performance of a lifetime. These might both be records. I'm going to look into that. Now, Tom Brady's probably going to be close for some of these. So Steve Young threw for six passing touchdowns in a Super Bowl XXIX, which is a third IX. What is IX? I'm sorry. I'm stupid. IX might be 11. So is this was this 31? IX is nine because it's 10 minus one. I kind of hate that. 
So that was uh, Super Bowl 29. Yeah, 29. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. But uh, point is that Steve Young has a record for touchdowns in a game with six in the Super Bowl. And uh, passing yards in a game is uh, Tom Brady with 505. Yeah, I knew he would have that in that freaking game. But, uh, you know, George Hawk put in a good shift, especially in just his second year in the NFL. Not a bad game. We'll do season four for shits and gigs. So I guess it's time for the offseason. Um, we will have some big free agents to think about. Geno Atkins, I think, will be one of them. Jesse Bates is our, our top guy here. Whoa, 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 whoa. It said we lost Super Bowl 56. Oh, okay. Uh, the fact that it has uh, the Saints logo on the left with the 46 over there and the 29 on the right with our logo, um, I, I don't like that at all. That Didn't care for that. It kind of spooked me for a second. AJ Green's down to an 80. I'm out. Wow, this is actually not a huge free agent class. I'm going to bring back Jesse Bates. I'm going to bring back Billy Price. Malik Jefferson, I guess, is a good special teamer, but that's kind of it for him right now. All right, so Malik Jefferson is back. Billy Price is back. Jesse Bates is back. I'm going to get a different middle linebacker that is not named Preston Brown in free agency. AJ Green, you were great for us, but you're going to be asking for a ton of money, and I'm not giving it to you. Eh, only 5.3, I guess, but, like, he's an 80 now. I mean, maybe I can give you a two-year contract for old time's sake, and you can just be on the team. He's going to test out free agency. I'm not going to franchise tag him for 19 mil. I gave him more money than he was asking for. So uh, if you don't want to be on the defending champion Cincinnati Bengals, that's your own fault. We're going to have 55 mil to spend to try and repeat. Leighton Van Der Esch could be a good option, but I, I feel like I get him somewhat a lot. Somewhat often. Nobody wants AJ Green. I'll give you a contract, buddy. Just all you got to do is accept it. So we got Naheem Hines, Leighton Van Der Esch rejected. I wasn't going to go too much money on him. I know I get him a lot, so I didn't want to do that. I also got MVS and Marquez Valdez Scantling. So AJ Green has yet to decide. I'm cool if he doesn't accept because, uh, I mean, we have four good receivers. I might even withdraw my offer. Tyler Boyd and John Quick Silver going to be a good combo. Offensive line is looking fantastic. Naheem Hines is going to be a great backup running back. And then defensively, I guess Jermaine Pratt is going to have to be the guy here for a minute. Um, no one got upgraded to superstar development. That's kind of sucky. I just want to see if AJ Green ended up signing or somebody else stole him. He might have accepted. AJ Green is back. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, why not? All right. I'm down for it. Our quarterback, Hawk, is up to an 84 overall. But it is NFL draft time. We're going to be picking at number 32 overall, obviously. That's what happens when you win the Super Bowl. However... Are we going to get anybody that's going to make an impact on this team? I think it's doubtful because this team is really good at this point. If there's a good linebacker, might consider taking them, but it might just be taking the best player available. A lot of good running backs, though, I will say that. Let's go with Raleigh Lambert out of Louisville. Maybe a good third cornerback in there. 70 overall, ranked number 23. We took him at 32. He's a backup. All I need him to do is just be okay when he's on the field. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. He's no Scott Pilgrim, but... Steve is also trying to go against the world. I've never seen that movie. Sky Pilgrim vs. the World. Never appealed to me, but it's got Michael Sarah, who's pretty funny in uh, Arrested Development, which is like my favorite show ever, at least the first couple seasons. But, I mean, there just weren't any good linebackers. Marquan Nash looks okay. I might just be forced to take him. But uh, this was kind of a weak class for what I needed. Rashard Bigsby looks solid. But uh, is he really going to play at all? I've got good D tackles. Probably not. So, ooh, hold on. Lester Franklin out of Georgia Southern. Why don't you go ahead and come to the team? 65 overall. Good hit power, good speed, good power moves. I don't know what his deal is, man. Take another corner back here in Jelani Biddle out of UCLA. 68 overall. Number 54 in the class. We took him at 96. Another solid selection. But we're going to simulate to the end. CPU drafted really poorly, per usual. But that is the way she goes. We'll check out the rest of the draft. And see how good the class was overall. And there are a bunch of 77s in there. But um, for the most part, and there's always good running backs, dude. You don't have to draft a running back in the first. But if you have the first pick of the second, you will get a good running back if you want. But wow, 75 overall tackle in the third round. Very good player there. This is your team for season four, the fourth and final season. Eifert is regressing quite a bit. But um, AJ Green's down to an 80. 
I'm sure Bengals fans wanted me to hold on to him. Hawk down to an 82. That morale is kind of worn off a little bit after the Super Bowl. No one else has gotten upgrades in development. Geno Atkins is down to an 84. Sad times here. Sad times indeed. But, again, it's, it's the way she goes sometimes. We're an 85 overall. 89 offense. 87 defense. I don't even think I can spend any player progression points. Ah, we can get tight end. All right. That's going to be it. Let's go ahead and simulate to... Might as well go straight to the postseason. See what happens. I'll see you guys there. If we make it, we make it. If we miss it, we just won the Super Bowl. So, kind of, who cares? Another first round bye. As we went 11-5 and five winning the AFC North. Love to see that. George Hawk, first in the NFL in passing touchdowns with 44. Cincinnati Playbook OP with the defense let me down. Number 26... 26, I should say, in the NFL. They rank 26. I can't say number and then add TH to the end. 4,000 passing yards, 44 TDs. Joe Mixon had 1,500 yards, exactly 10 touchdowns. Amazing season. Receiving, though, Tyler Boyd, 1,200 plus yards, 14 TDs. John Silver, 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. Even Drew Sample, the backup tight end, found the end zone six times. More than our starting tight end and Tyler Eifert. The offensive line held together beautifully. And then defensively, Miles Jack had a ton of tackles, tackles for loss, nine for Carl Lawson. We didn't really get a ton of pressure, but that's kind of the story of this rebuild a bit. We didn't get a ton of pressure, but Raleigh Lambert, the rookie out of Louisville with three picks, he almost had as many interceptions as assisted tackles. Five interceptions for William Jackson, forced fumbles, let's see here, one for the entire team, and Austin Allen also recovered it. And then I assume no defensive touchdowns. I would assume correctly. And we might have a conversation here for MVP with George Hawk as he wins MVP. There you go, George. ASC Offense Player of the Year is Ezekiel Elliott and not George Hawk, though. We've been slighted. Defensive Player of the Year is Miles Garrett. William Jackson, number seven, really. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Sean McCarthy of the Steelers. No Bengals in there. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is John Presley. I'm surprised to not see Raleigh Lambert a little bit higher after his three interception season, but... He also had like 15 total tackles, so I guess he didn't have that great of a season. No, he did, he did, he did. But we'll upgrade the team and then see who we face in the divisional. I'll show you guys the squad, though, before we get eliminated in sim round one by the Titans. Titans are OP. You got 91 offense, something defense, probably like an 89, right? Team looking quite good. They drafted a running back with hidden development. Probably star, but that's interesting. CPU really never drafts anyone that good. He's not good, but he does have star development or better. Silver at an 87 overall. Love to see that. And then defensively, again, no one has gotten upgraded, but 87 overall for Kevin King now. William Jackson is not even progressing nearly as quickly. Peterson's up to an 87 overall. Carl Lawson up to an 87. Show me that this team can be productive and win games. 89 defense to go with that 91 offense. Let's advance to the conference championship. And we do. Can we beat the Ravens? AFC North Clash here. We crushed the Titans 35-7. Now for a shot at the Super Bowl. Can the Bengals make it in back-to-back -back years? They can. And we have the Tampa Bay Bucks in Dallas. Let's go ahead and upgrade the team. That should put us at 88 overall, 93 offense, 91 defense. Will the Bucks even be close? Answer. It's within six. I guess that's close enough. But we'll see if we can be repeat Super Bowl champions for what might be the first time in Madden 20 for me. Of course, if you guys want to save uh, $20 on any type of event where you need to buy tickets, remember to use code BENGAL for a discount. $20 off every time you use that code. And of course, follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description along with all my links. Twitch.tv slash BENGAL where I stream. Instagram.com slash BENGAL YouTube where everyone goes. You had Instagram? It's in the description. Of course I do. As uh, it is 24-24 and a very, very highly contested game here in Dallas. Now 38-24, 45-24 as the Cincinnati Bengals pull away. Your final will be 52-31. The Cincinnati Bengals are repeat champions here once again in Season 4. But yeah, all those links you're going to want are in the description Patreon if you're feeling generous. There are some associated rewards as well that uh, will be redeemed later down the Madden 20 line. But yeah... The Bengals have done it back-to-back -back years. This is the same team that couldn't get past the first round of the playoffs ever with uh, Marvin Lewis. Year in, year out, 
make the playoffs, lose, make the playoffs, lose, make the playoffs, lose. And now in back-to-back -back years, not only have they won, but they're Super Bowl champions. Twice in a row. As William Jackson, I guess, had a pick six, one interception and a touchdown that gives him Super Bowl MVP. Very, very cool. And uh, yeah, you guys have already seen the Super Bowl uh, trophy presentation. And here, that is once again, Hawk up there, Tyler Boyd, some familiar faces, and this is becoming a familiar feeling. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And this was arguably our most successful rebuild yet. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.